We begin with Tim Robbins. He pitched off the mound in Bull Durham. He was perhaps best known for his turns as a psychotic television killer before that. But these days, he's being compared to Orson Welles. He won the Best Actor Award in Cannes last year for Robert Altman's The Player, and then won critical acclaim for his directorial debut, Bob Roberts, a stinging look at presidential politics. Now he has a featured role in Altman's extraordinary three-hour ensemble, Shortcuts, which is based on the short stories of Raymond Carver, and we're pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you, I look forward to this. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming. It's really good. My pleasure. Uh, tell me, let's just talk about Shortcuts, which I saw over the weekend for the first time. Mm -hmm. What Altman has been here for an hour, and we had a wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. I can I confess to you that I don't think I really understand what's going on in his mind. Uh -huh. I, I don't understand. <laughs> can it you help me out? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. I, all I know is that wh while you're doing it, it's an awful lot of fun, yeah. and uh, you feel like you're a, a real part of the the experience, and, yeah. uh, which is pretty rare, you know. In and the more industrial the, the business gets. But it's just, is it that he brings that sense of adventure and spirit and fun and, and, and also daring, quality? Yeah, and daring. So, you know, he'll trust an actor, I think, more than any other director will. He'll, he'll let them, he won't let them fall on their face, but he'll, he'll encourage them to do things they, they've never done before. That are not in the script. That are not in the script. Yeah. The script is like a blueprint. And uh, without taking any credit away from any writer, uh, the, the, because um, what happens is there's a, a communication that happens between uh, not only Altman and the actor, but the unseen audience. You know, what's going to happen in the moment? What's going to happen when this translates into, into celluloid? And, and what happens is that you have this, this spirit of adventure that is, uh, is, is very uh, liberating. And, and you're encouraged to do things that you, you wouldn't normally do. Now, this is not to say that it's, it's this anarchic experience. Right. The, there, is a, there is a script. There are lines. You do talk about it beforehand. You do uh, ar arrive at a perimeter uh, of where you can and cannot go. But within that context, within five takes, you're allowed to do all yeah. kinds of different things. Does he do a lot of takes? I mean, is he uh, one not of those directors? Not very many because we don't have enough money. To, to do a lot of takes. So there's an awful lot of work to do within a day. So I would say five is probably the top. It's usually about two or three. Yeah. Was it different working for him in Shortcuts than it was in The Player? Well, Shortcuts was an, a lot shorter of an experience yeah. for me. It was only a two-week job. So uh, I was able to go in and out. And uh, The Player was seven weeks. Yeah. He came to you, how did the association begin between you and Alton? Because he evidently had some sense of respect for you from theater, from work he'd seen you do in the well, theater or off-Broadway or somewhere? I, uh, I, I first met him when he was trying to set up shortcuts uh, a couple years before the player happened. And uh, I had been such a huge fan of his. I, I think Nashville was a real seminal experience in my life. Um, I was, you know, I think 14 years old and I hadn't been really a movie fan before that. And I, I, for the first time I saw what movies could be, the epic quality they could yeah. take on, the, the, the scope they could take on, w retaining a sense of humor. And so when I met him, I said basically I'd do anything for him. And he said, okay, you're down, thank you, and I'll get in touch with you. And, and, and that, I never got that phone call. I was wondering what was happening. I heard it fell apart because he couldn't get the financing, which is a real tragedy, you know, mm -hmm. someone with as many great films as he not being able to get the financing for this. So ironically, the player came up, and, and, and through the success of the player, he was able to do his first love, which was Shortcuts. The, he is the one who suggested the Orson Welles analogy for you. But, yes, but damn him. <laughs> Does that mean I'm going to be scorned and abused for the that's rest the, of my career? That's true. The <laughs> that's right. Your life will be one punishment after another, and you'll never be able to raise enough money to make the great film that you're capable of making. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm in hell from now on, I guess. Let me just take a look. It, it set up. The, how what he's done in shortcuts, what Robert Altman's done in shortcuts, because it is a series of stories uh, from the works and writings of, of Raymond Carver, mm -hmm. uh, and you wonder what is the connective tissue that that brings them all together for one movie, and you may still wonder that after the night it's over, <laughs> as some critics have noted. But it is an experience. I said to when I saw it, this is more this. It's fascinating to be there more than it's interesting in terms of one storyline that mm -hmm. you had which which in player you at least had one storyline right. one narrative here you 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 got a series of stories taking place a series of vignettes yes but it, it works somehow yeah and it's like it's like i think it's also the the richness of the experience from what i can tell because it's hard to be 
you know, objective when you're in something. Right. But from what I can tell from talking to people, that it's it's a it's a more full-bodied experience as a movie. It's more like reading a novel than than seeing a movie. Yeah. And and, and here you get to read a novel in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Set and without Evelyn Wood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God, I, I once took that course. Uh, <laughs> Cop and plan. This, the thing we will see is when you, as the motorcycle cop, uh -huh. uh, come to you know, set this up for me. You come to uh, uh, pull this uh, woman who's in a clown. Well, um, uniform. Uh, is there anything we need to say about your character other than he is a motorcycle cop, a motorcycle a, a, cop, a well-known womanizer, and um, philanderer, and philanderer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> damn good citizen though. <laughs> That's right. Other than that, <laughs> and, and has this wonderful thing where he takes his little dog and puts him on the back of the motorcycle. Terrible husband. Terrible <laughs> father. Terrible husband. Damn good Terrible citizen. Terrible father. That's right. Roll tape. Here it is. I see your license registration number. Did I do something wrong, officer? Take your sunglasses off, ma'am. You know, uh, this clown is detachable. I um, I have a permit for it. It's decode. I've been stopped before. There's never been a problem. Phone number, ma'am. Five oh four oh three six one. Let you go with a warning this time, ma'am. You were driving too slow. Just as dangerous as driving too fast. Please refrain from doing so in the future. Can I go now? No, ma'am. One more question. What's that? How many clowns can you fit in this car? I beg your pardon? How many clowns can you fit in this car, ma'am? Why'd you take my phone number? Well, you never know when you might need the services of a clown, ma'am. You have children? No, ma'am. I, uh, I can use some cheering up from time to time myself, ma'am. Being a cop isn't easy. You have a nice day now. Now, why are you? <laughs> Tell me about the scene. <laughs> well, first of all, you notice the music, which is terrific. The very score is great. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I wanted to. I wanted to do. I, I, playing a cop, I wanted to play this scene because yeah. I have a lot of women friends that have gone through this experience. Yeah. Uh, not only in L.A. but in other cities. It's kind of the abuse of power. It's kind of, yeah. you know, <coughs> slipping in the question about the phone number and in a, in, a, in a moment of weakness, and they give them and. Just uh, and, and I also I also was intrigued with the idea of this policeman wondering about clowns and, and wondering how many clowns she could fit in the it. car. You know, this this thing being that he'd seen it at a circus at some point. You know, this, yeah. his sense of humor, which is it's uh, it was it's it's a good example of Altman because it was uh, it was a scene that was in, in the original script and I said well what about this and then he, he would it was in the original script it wasn't it was not right. and, and and I said well what about a scene like this could I have a scene where I could try to pick up a yeah. woman and he said well great let's pick up the clown you know and so then then he, he wrote out a thing and I said well can I add this line he said yeah sure you know, so it's a kind of collaborative thing yeah. now by the time you did the scene had it all been written out or yes that was not improvisation there I mean you weren't Sort of no, it was. It had all been written out. Yeah. Uh, when you when you work with Altman, does he ever say no? It doesn't work for me. It it's, it doesn't play. It's not what I have in mind. Uh. Yes, yes. But if you really press it, he'll say, "Okay, well then, give me one that I can use, the one that I think is good, and then you you do what you think can work." If, if it really is an issue, he'll, he'll, he'll split it evenly. Mm -hmm. So he'll get one that will cover him, and he'll, he'll let the actor indulge himself or herself. Here's another clip. This set this up for me. This is because I want to talk about a lot of things. and I want to do these two clips because they give us a chance to express some, some attitude about the film. Uh, this is nude, they'd call it. I, this is you're in bed with. Mm -hmm. 
with uh, Madeline Stowe, right. who is my wife, my real wife in the film. Uh, I, I have an affair with uh, one woman and try to pick up the clown, so this guy's all over the place. Right. So uh, it's uh, basically he's come back to his wife. He's been dumped by the woman he was having an affair with, so now he's the She's good off with another man. Right. right. And, and now he's the good boy again. And he's also given up on the idea of quitting smoking. So that's Roll tape. Need to Here it is. Marion's got a crush on Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek? Yeah. Where'd she meet him? At a party. He's an art collector or something. She thinks he might buy one of her paintings. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I don't see how she could even give those things away. Well, she sells a lot more than you think. I posed for her today. Ralph walked in the middle of it. Ralph, what a jerk. I don't know if I know a bigger jerk. Well, it was embarrassing, but I guess they're used to it being doctors and artists it was and all. embarrassing about it. Well, you know. I was nude. You mean like you were naked? Mm-hmm. Nude, they call it. You mean without any underpants on? Mm-hmm. Naked. <sighs> it wouldn't be a trip if Alex Trebek bought a nude painting of me. All right, let me talk about uh, you and, and go you grew up in the village? Greenwich Village, yes. Yeah. Your dad was Gil Robbins. In the Highwaymen uh, yeah. folk group, yes. Yeah. Did Growing up in that family, was it inevitable that you would somehow either be a, a performer of some kind? Well, not necessarily. Um, it was discouraged because uh, my father had first-hand knowledge of how hard the business is. And uh, there were no dreams, you know, yeah. unreasonable dreams that anyone held. It was all uh, a knowledge that it was hard work and that if, you, if you're going to do it, you better be willing to really work at it and work for years and years and years and not get a thing. That's the kind of uh, reality I was presented with. So um, it wasn't inevitable that I would go into it. Well, did, when you started out, was it acting that was the, what you wanted to do? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and directing. I actually just started directing about two years after I started acting. Directing for film? Dr no, directing for plays mm -hmm. uh, in high school. When you were like 14 or 15? Yeah. yeah. And you went to Hollywood, and when you were out there, mainly what kinds of roles? Well, I, I first started. I first started working in television, episodic uh, TV, you know, playing psychopaths, and <laughs> criminals, <laughs> mainly probably because I had a terrible attitude walking into the auditions. You know? Like what? Like uh, I'm going to do television? <laughs> yes, I'm going to deign to do television. <laughs> you think you can hire me? I'm on my way back to New York to become a stage actor. <laughs> So, uh, so I think this translated into me getting some 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 yeah. roles of people with attitudes. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> you mean they could see this attitude that you had? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> then, then was was the, the Durham Bulls, uh, Bull Durham, the big breakthrough for you? Yeah, it was the first time I was really uh, seen in a in a uh, major hit, major yeah. hit film. Yeah. And how did that happen with Ron Sheldon? Um, well, I went auditioned for him. Um, had a scotch with him, and then uh, came back the next day and threw fastballs at Costner and uh, <laughs> threw many over his head. And Ron said, "Well, that's the guy." You know? yeah, well, there's a thing about you and Costner on that film. The, the Bull Durham was filmed partly in Durham, North Carolina, where the Durham Bulls, and they just closed the stadium. Yeah, that, yeah that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. The um, there is a notion that someone was explaining to me that that Costner still believed that he could hit it out of the park, and you still believe that you could strike somebody out. So you both lived with the notion that we can actually do this. Yes, well, it, it, Ron Shelton had to tell us, that, okay, guys, you're just actors, you know. <laughs> I'll, make it, I'll make it work in, in editing, <laughs> just quit it. But I, you know, but we got our way. I threw my curveball on, on film. There's yeah. a curveball in Bull Durham, yeah. and Kevin hits one out. Did you know how to throw a curveball before the No, not a good curveball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what to do. I knew what to do, but I didn't know how to really finesse it. Yeah. Th that opened the door for what? What happened after that? 
Um, well, uh, more opportunity, more choice. Uh, but uh, of course, the first choices that you are offered right after that are more of the same. More sports stars. More sports, uh, or more uh, crazed, uh, intelligent level low kind yeah. of characters. And uh, so it was a matter of self-discipline of saying no. I don't want to get typecast. And had you had the idea for Bob Roberts before before that? Uh, or was that something that was sort of? Yes, actually, I had I had done a short film uh, about a year before Bull Durham of Bob Roberts. Oh, as a short? Yeah, for yeah. Saturday Night Live. And uh, I had been working on it, and I had a first draft by that point. And then I, then I just put it away for a while. And people kept telling me, there's no way you're going to get that done. So I, yeah. and then meaning, I, meaning there's no way you can find money to make that? No way, yeah. yeah. And were they right, almost? They were right for five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody wanted to finance it. No. Yeah. No. What was the objection, that it was a political story? Well, that it was political. I'm first-time director, first-time writer. I'm going to star in it as well. Uh, you know, should we trust this guy? Uh, can he do it? Uh, you know, those What did concerns. it cost you? Four or five million dollars? Four million dollars. Four million. And you found it in London or overseas? Uh, overseas and uh, half uh, overseas, half uh, live entertainment here. Working title is the overseas yeah. film company. What made you think you could direct? Um, well, I've been doing it in the theater for so long. Uh, I know how to work with actors. I, I, I know how to uh, tell a story. Um, and I know what's wrong when I see it, even in my own writing, which I've been doing in the theater. So I knew I could do that part of it. I, I, I figured if I got a good cinematographer and someone that understood the films that I wanted to emulate in this film, that I'd be okay. Yeah. Did you have the same cinematographer that Robert Altman had used in Yes, in Jean Player? Lapine, who was an excellent handheld cameraman. And that's, that was my major criteria. I wanted a uh, real documentary look mm -hmm. on, on Bob Roberts. Mm -hmm. this, there is, to know and read about you, there is this real sense of political activism that is part of you. Where does that come from? Well, um, it's always been a part of me. Uh, you know, there's an awful lot of people that will say that, you know, actors shouldn't speak out. Now, it's kind of, you know, tiring. We wouldn't say that here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's, 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 it's an interesting theory because where do you draw the line? Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. But um, I, I've always been this way. And I, you or know, the notion that it's abusing your public celebrity somehow. I if, think it's if, if you have opinions. I think it's abusing it not to. I do too. I think that you have a responsibility as a citizen in a democracy to express your opinion as many times as you as you possibly can to as many people as you possibly but can. But when you went around to raise the money, come back to the political activism, but when you went around to raise money for Bob Roberts, did they say, come on, Tim, I mean, all you're trying to do is raise money to make a film that, in a sense, uh, promotes your own political agenda? Well, not really, because my, my political agenda has nothing to do with Bob Roberts' political agenda. I, well, I, no, I know it doesn't, but it was almost like you were satirizing his political agenda. Yes, but at the same time, I was satirizing Gore Vidal's yeah. and, and Bugs Raplin's, you know, the other characters. I, I think there's a, you know, there's a certain amount, of course, I don't want to promote Bob Roberts or the Bob Roberts of this world, but at the same time, it's not a simple black and white issue. There are all kinds of grays in there. And, and I think the ma my major ambition in making that film was to create something that was about something, but also had a good sense of humor, not only about its subject, but about itself. Something that could laugh at itself, something that said, did not take itself so seriously. Um, you know, I think it's a, a real important to have a sense of humor especially when you deal with these things. <laughs> but politics and music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you write Bob Roberts, was it? Yes. You wrote the screenplay? Yes. Yeah. And my brother wrote the music. Yeah. And whose idea was it to cast Gore Vidal? Uh, it was my idea. To and where did that come from? Well, uh, I, I met him. Because it's perfect. I mean, it is an extraordinary performance. Oh, isn't it great? Oh. It's like, uh, well, you talk to him, and he said he, he, it, was, it was as if his grandfather was with him the day yeah. he was shooting that. Just tell the story of his grandfather, because he used to read. His grandfather was a senator who was blind, blind yes. and he would read to him when he was like a teenager, right. as I remember. Yeah. It was very interesting. And, and uh, he, uh, what happened was, we were, I just set him in front of the camera. I said, OK, here's the deal. You've just been defeated. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you about America, about Bob Roberts. Yeah. And he just started talking. And as he was talking, he started to open up more and more. And before you knew it, there was this incredible tragedy in his eyes that, that actors can't reach, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was really a moving experience for, for me. Because for he was reflecting his own sense of... Well, I think the whole country's sense of yeah. disillusionment with, uh, with what's happened. How would you characterize your own poli your your politics? Uh, well, 
I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I, it's really hard to, to label it. I, I wouldn't say I'm a liberal because there's so many things that liberals do that uh, I, I find repulsive. Like there's an awful lot of liberals that are about to vote for Giuliani. You know, what's that all about? Uh, I think we're headed down a terrible, terrible road, if that's the case. Yet at the same time, I suspect that you feel like that there's a lot of problems in urban America that are not being attended to. Uh, That's true, but it's not, gonna, it's not going to help any to, mob rule is not going to help anything. I mean, this is a man that marched with, with police to City Hall and, and, and broke through barricades. I mean, this is not, this you, is you not know, a... I, 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 because he was here on this broadcast on Friday night, uh -huh. his argument is he didn't do that, that he was two, you know, he was, it was two hours later when he made his speech and that it was a different... Okay, did, well, that's his know. argument. He's running for office. He has yeah. to say that. Right. But the point is that this is, a, this is an awfully progressive city, and there's an awful lot of programs that need to stay in order yeah. for us to not have more problems, like, for example, uh, rehabilitation and, and um, homeless shelters and things that are, you know, it would be better if, there, if we didn't have to put our money into that, but the, the hard, cold reality is we do. And, and someone coming along and saying that you'll be pushed out of a homeless shelter, you know, after a certain amount, after of, time. Certain amount of time, is just going to create more problems on the streets. Mm -hmm. This is the mentality that we're dealing with here. And, and he's been you know, retracting everything in the past week. And it's just, you know, when people start retracting things, you know, it's, it, what, is his, what is his point of view? Who is the real Rudolph Giuliani? Mm -hmm. So I, if you're going to, you know, if this is on tonight and you guys vote, if you're voting tomorrow, you know, think twice about it. Mm -hmm. I, let me come back to Gore Vidal, because yes. what was interesting about that performance is that Gore Vidal on this broadcast and other broadcasts has talked about his own vision of America, which he, in a campaign for the Senate, reflected on him in a real sense that America is a captive of sort of an establishment, a corporate oligarchy kind of. Mm. Uh, is that a reflection of your own sense of, of the paralysis that's a part of our politics? Well, I, I, I don't think uh, there's an awful lot of difference between Democrats and Republicans. I don't, uh, I, 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 I prefer the Democrats. I, I don't think that uh, an awful lot gets done because there's just an awful lot of bureaucracy that has to be gotten rid of and how, did you, how do you get rid of it? I have no idea. All I know is that there is, a, there is an awful lot of, um, uh, if, if, if you were to say, uh, what the media will tell you that there is, well, the right wing will tell you that there's a left leaning media, mm -hmm. and and the left wing will tell you that there's a right leaning media, uh, and somewhere in the middle there's the truth. Uh, but one thing I do know is that there, I don't really see much of a left anywhere, in in uh, in in politics, uh, and consequently in the in the media, I don't really see a, a strong left. I see a, a right wing and I see a moderate. Yeah. I don't really see progressive senators. Yeah, well, Wellstone from might be one, one. right? Would be the first one. But I why? Think so, so, but you, you You're have right though. There is not, the um, the left in America is a very different left than it used to be. Yeah, you know, or or, or, uh, or different than any other country that considers what it considers its left. So when it's characterized though, overall, it's characterized. You know, there's so many people with such loud mouths saying that we have such a left-dominated Senate and a left-dominated Congress. I'm just flabbergasted. I don't know what they're talking about. I have no idea what that, that is. Any political heroes? Uh, not really. No. None. No. Yeah. How, about, how about in your own business film? Who are the people that have influenced you the most as directors or actors, people that... Well, Altman. Uh, um, I love the work of James Stewart, and that's a, I, I keep a picture of him in my office. Why? Because it reminds me that I can like an actor that was a Reaganite. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what is it that he had as an actor that Jimmy Stewart had? That a, a wonderful humanity, a, yeah. a wonderful vulnerability, and a, and a real, uh, um, a real courage in playing tragedy especially in, in comedies. You know, I think of It's a Wonderful Life and the, the scene in the bar. Are you terribly ambitious? Uh, Driven? I, uh, I'm, very, uh, I'm very motivated mm -hmm. to, uh, to, uh, to work when I work. Uh, right now I'm in a period of um, 
real comfort. I'm, I'm trying not to uh, do much at all. I'm just hanging out with my family. Yeah, because um, you have two, two kids. Have, you and Susan have two. We have two kids, and, uh, and yeah. I have a stepdaughter. Yeah, Susan has a previous uh, yes. a kid from another marriage. The um, Altman had said about you, he said, there's a sense of drive inside of him that's really strong. He really wants the golden apple. <laughs> well, so my uh, question was, what in the hell is the golden apple? I have apple? no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's like that golden ring. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but what is it that drives you? I mean, obviously, you know, having two young children as you do and a, and a stepchild and, and having a marriage that works for you brings a certain enormous contentment. At the same time, uh, yours is a creative impulse to do something to make well, what I found out with Bob Roberts was that if I really want to do the work I want to do, I have to work real hard to do it. Uh, it and it's not going to be easy. And, um, you know, look, for example, I'm working on a thing right now that's going to be a real hard sell. But I'm just going to have to keep working on it until I, until I can sell it. Um, it's, 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 it's a matter of storytelling. It's what stories do I want to tell, what, story tell, what stories do I want to be a part of as an actor. Are they mainly not mainstream kinds of stories? They're mainly non-formulaic telling of stories. Right. It could be the same old story told in a different way. It, it's a matter of how it's told. I'd rather not fall into the formulaic comedies and the formulaic dramas where you know who the bad guy is and evil is black. And, and you know, are it's you all ever black and white? Yeah. And it's not. Yeah. It's. It's. I'd rather deal with the complexities of human nature. You know, there are s awfully charming things in evil people, and there are awfully terrible things in, in inherently good people, and that's what I'm most interested in, in finding. Well, one of the charming things about Bob Roberts was a kind of sense of humor that he had. Right. Yeah. And and the, and Griffin Mill as well. Yeah. You know, they were all. They were both very charming. And I think that it, it, when you when you approach drama this way you're, I think, being a little more responsible to what real life is all about. It's, you can't, you, you don't know who the bad guys are walking down the street. I want to show something here. We're going to go a little bit long here. Uh, this is a clip from, you mentioned Griffin Miller. This is a clip from The Player with Tim Robbins. Roll tape. Point out also that Gore Vidal, I want to forget this, said of you, since I quoted Robert Altman, you are a dangerous man. Oh, well that <laughs> is a compliment. <laughs> Coming from Gore Vidal. <laughs> That's right. Let me just come back to this notion about where you are creatively. I mean, that you don't, Altman would seem to be some kind of, I mean, a sort of kindred spirit in terms of wanting to create things mm -hmm. that deal with human character and the complexity of human character that are not mainstream, you know. Yes. Stories. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Can you, do you want to make political stories or just... Not necessarily all political stories. Yeah. Um, I think there's, you know, it's, it's a matter of what you, you deem political. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I just saw... Uh, <laughs> Male-female relationships can be very political. Very political, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you probably know. I just saw that Lenny Riefenstahl documentary. Yeah. It was at the New York she Film Festival. She was the Hitler's favorite filmmaker. Right. And, and there's an interviewer with her in that, in that film where she's saying that she didn't believe what she was doing was political. And it, you know, it's, it, it's a very interesting, you know, yeah. what, is she telling the truth? Is she lying? Who knows? It's, but what, what was really interesting was that here was the, probably the most potent propaganda one could imagine coming out of film. And the, the creator of, of such is, is, is denying any kind of political involvement. Uh, and, and the next time anyone asks me why I'm <coughs> political, yeah. you know, I, we, one should watch this documentary. It's very, very illuminating as far as, as the relationship between art yeah. and politics. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. not doing a thing political? Yeah. I think so. Status quo being just letting things go on as they are. Because politics is everywhere. political. Yeah. It's almost like Goebbels saying he's not a... <laughs> He's not a propagandist. Right. You know. Just but, a storyteller. Yeah, just a storyteller. <laughs> I was just trying to get our message out. You, know. uh, you just finished a couple of things. With all the progressive, this sort of struck me, with all of the progressive um, ideas that you have and, and all the things that have shaped you and however you are as a political person and the ideas that you believe in. You, you recently met Aristide, mm -hmm. yes? Yes. You know, and right. believe in, in him and his return to power in, in Haiti. But yes. do you believe that we should make that happen? I think that we could uh, help that happen by a very, very strong blockade, not just the blockade that's happening now, but a, a, a real blockade But not necessarily travel. send American men and women there to... I personally them. cannot advocate sending American troops anywhere because I've never served in the armed forces. I feel it would be unfair of me to do that. Okay. One last point. Um, 
with all those political ideas, and you used, and I was struck by this, non-union. Bob, uh, Bob Roberts was a non-union film. Mm. Any, any sort of, uh, did you have, was that in a moment of conflict internally It was at all? a huge moment of conflict. I would have preferred to. We only had $4 million to make the movie. So what we did, the compromise I struck was that we would pay union wages to all of the people that were in the film. No one worked for sub-union wages. The only thing we couldn't provide due to economics was the uh, health and benefits. A couple of quick things. You just finished a film with Paul Newman, mm -hmm. right, d by the Coen brothers. Yes. Called? Hudsucker Proxy. And, and Robert Altman is going to make a new film about the fashion business, and you, you've already said, I'll do it. Yes. You know. I haven't read a script. <laughs> you don't have read a script. Do you know what the wants. part is? Uh, I'm, I play a sports writer or a sports caster. And that's all I know. You're going to model it after Bob Costas. I'm going, I'm going to be, I'm going to, yeah, Bob Costas <laughs> in Paris <laughs> in a about hotel five, room. eight, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Tim. Tim Robbins, Shortcuts, Robert Altman film and other things he'll be in. Uh, Stanley Crouch is here, an interesting guy. Back in a moment. Stay with us.